What's up everybody? We're here in Boonville, Missouri, and uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of camping trip because we basically have nowhere to stay. Camping out here at CMMG, and while we're here, we're in search of the elusive 5.56 gun that nobody wants. We're here at CMMG, and we're going to be taking a look inside. We have some new things that are going to be coming out very shortly, so uh, stay tuned. I play a lot of Battlefront 2. Okay. A little too much. So the reference is from which movie? Uh, not that big of a You thing. know! Tyson, what are you doing? <laughs> Alright guys, so we're here at the CMMG test fire range. Easy for you to say. We're here at the CMMG test range with Mike Odell. Hi Katie. Good, you? So, yeah, kind of in this area. Oh. The beast. All right, so this guy is the gun that has been brought to just about every industry event that has been since the inception of the Mark 47. The very first SHOT Show range day that we went to with the Mark 47 was a 16-inch barrel. Mm -hmm. Everything since then has been this one, nice. this exact model. So I remember shooting that gun, but then ever since we've shot this thing, this thing has had over 100,000 rounds through it. Yeah, we, which is, we hit 100,000, we said, oh, we're stopping counting. Yeah, just, yeah, it, just, it, just it's, it's just, a good enough number. Just break it off, right? And I assumed that this thing had a barrel change in there. No. This thing is, what is this thing had changed on it? Like, excuse me, what is it had broken and then replaced? Kind of the things you would typically think of breaking with that many rounds, or actually probably fewer things than you would expect to break for that many rounds. Uh, firing pins, we break firing pins. Yeah. Uh, extractor, yeah. hammer and trigger pins. Uh, um, and in fact, uh, speaking of that, that anti-walk pin, the last uh, Iraq veteran shoot, right? Yep. Yeah, the last Iraq veteran shoot, I was standing there when this happened. The thing got so hot 
that the trigger pins superheated the anti-walk uh, retainer yeah. and just yeah, just a, a slight bit of trying to tighten on that because they were wanting to rattle loose with that many rounds. It just bent it. Let's see, does this optic work? It's made by Leopold. It probably doesn't work. Upper, lower, bulk air goop barrel, all original. Nice. And I've looked down in the barrel. It has a lot of rifling left in it. It's, it's surprising, isn't it? And the other thing I want to point out is... A hey, real quick briefing on this. This is going to look a little bit erratic, but because this is an indoor... Uh, berm just for safety purposes the best practice is to spread the bullets around so we're actually going to rake the uh, surface area of the berm so you will see me kind of go like this a little bit when we're shooting full auto <laughs> it's even more obnoxious indoors isn't it though For the most part, we don't build anything until the order is placed. On occasion, we do have things where we have like NRA or shot show guns uh, that have been out for display and they'll come back and those are already pre-built. We might do those as like an employee sale or you know get them out there a little bit less expensive. Uh, sometimes these are rider guns that come back. So, uh, oh, so I probably have a few entries in here. You might, yeah. Yeah. Or we'll go look for the dirtiest one. Oh, why won't you go in your home? Go in your home. might look familiar you see you might have a sneak peek at this this will see the light of day in the form of a firearm that's probably going to be a giveaway day two still no viable water source the elusive food source take a look at some of the things that they got in the last couple months where people have sent these in on mistakes they have made so what we have here is a 40 smith and wesson barrel you can see and it has an obstruction in it. It's been sectioned because they could not get this round out. And it looks really strange, you can see, because there's lead, copper, and then brass in front there. And I'll give you guys a hint. I want you guys to comment in the comment section down below on what you think happened to this barrel. But I'll give you a hint. These two things are also in that barrel. This is a 9 millimeter round. And this is a 40 Smith & Wesson round, and I'll give you guys another hint. 40 Smith & Wesson barrel, 40 Smith & Wesson round, 9 millimeter round, 40 Smith & Wesson barrel. These long ones you were looking at are 22 long rifle. Okay. Uh, these are a 45 cal. Okay. So not 5.56. Five, five, I don't believe so. Tyson, what are you doing? I don't know. There are some strange combinations here, and they seem to be multiplying. This one, for instance, has just grown its bottom half. Hopefully we'll see the rest of it here in relative short order. I need me one of these, and that's because I have an absolute hard-on for short barrel 308s. I noticed that you guys do sell a barrel. This is 12.5, right? Correct. 12.5 inch 308 barrel, mm -hmm. and this one also happens to be a machine gun, which we'll be using here just to few minutes so not only is it 308 short barrel so all the people who shoot like 308 long range you be like ah, it's not enough, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're also gonna just burn it into that berm over there <laughs> the thing about short barrel 308s that I really like is you trade that heavy barrel mm -hmm. that runs out there on the end for the length of the suppressor so you get the same length gun basically as a full length rifle, but you get to suppress it. Yeah. And you still get like point of aim, point of impact after like 400 yards. I mean, a 12 and a half inch barrel in the 308 is gonna do more than most people are capable of doing. Yeah, and that's the other thing, this gun. The balance is incredible. The balance is absolutely excellent. Yeah. Uh, especially if you wanted to rip stock it out. Yeah. What caliber are you working on? MK57. Not 5.56. No. I lost Mike, you know, like 20 minutes ago. I haven't seen a human being in like over an hour. They're gonna find me dead underneath the CNC machine sometime. Oh, hi Mike. Doing engineering things. Right? Exactly. 
Hey Tyson, what are you doing? More tech support time with CMMG on our lunch break here. And this one is a special one. I've never actually seen one of these, or I've seen them. I've never held one in my hand before. But there was a guy who returned his gun, said it was not working, and that this came out of this. And the gun was chambered in 5.56. And you can see that that... I mean, that's a 5.56 actually, five, six projectile, it's right? A, it's now a 5.56 five, 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 projectile. However, what it originated as... We'll just go ahead and set that down right there. What that originated as is that. That is a 300 blackout projectile. This is what a 5.56 five, projectile should look like out of a 5.56 five, casing. Got to be probably like a 220 grain, at least a 200 grain projectile yeah. uh, that was then mashed down by the barrel uh, because it was pushed all the way up there. And, now, and another note is... Uh, just because you have a forward assist on your gun doesn't mean you have to hit it with a hammer. Uh, blasphemy. Tyson, what are you doing? I don't know. Hey man, what's up? What caliber are you working on? Nine mil. Nine mil. Not five five six, huh? Nope, nope. Banshee nine mils. Okay. All right, I'll ask around somewhere else. Update. I thought I almost found it, but it was in the prototype area, and it is on the Mark IV lower. My phone, not yours. I'm sorry. I'll hand this to you. This is the six millimeter arc. Yes. It, Corner D literally came out with this. I think they announced it very shortly ago. This is what it looks like. And you say, well, we actually had to go figure out what exactly the round was. Uh, yeah, because I, I, I work on the gun manufacturer side. I don't know really anything about the rounds, so I had to do a little research. I'm like, okay, I know the gun that goes around that. 108 grain ELD match is 2,750 feet per second. Yeah, it was fast. Yeah, so essentially it's kind of making the 243 that works better in the AR platform. Okay, that's, we'll roll with that. That's kind of the way I would say it. So. Okay, well, that's what we're going to roll with. Yeah. We've made 243 fit in AR. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean this to be rude to Hornady for coming up the round or however this <laughs> might come off, but it's essentially adapting the 243 to work in the AR. Which is uh, that not, might be oversimplifying it. It, but. it probably is simplifying it a little bit, but at the same time, we've seen a lot of other new calibers coming out, and really, there's only so many ways that you can stuff a different thing in a different box. Right. So, I don't think that it's unreasonable to start adapting a lot of older cartridges yep. into the new age, which is the. I'm not going to use the M, um, MSR. No, I'm not going to use MSR. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Thank use, you. I'm going to use appreciate that into fighting rifles. Okay, okay? like fighting class weapons. Yeah. yeah, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I'm actually kind of impressed by that. Yeah. Because uh, I was expecting kind of like 243 recoil. Yep. And it didn't get it. Yes, sir. Yes, I will take another one. Did you see that? You see what I just did? When are we getting a... Um... <laughs> that's a long story. Well, I mean, you're an AK guy. Yeah. And you think about the Mark 47. That's yeah. significantly less belt recoil because the recoil system, the operating system of an AR are just tame stuff. Yeah. And most of the time, if you shot a 243, it's probably out of a bolt gun. Yeah. So Why? all that's going into your shoulder. Yeah. So I, I guess that therein lies the argument for doing things like this. Yeah. Because you get the buffer system you get the operational components of the AR to really knock down yeah. all the things that... I mean, they, they really are great platforms for beginner shooters that yeah. might want a round that's going to be fully capable of dropping that game. Oh, look, my chaperone. Good. I Avoid... you so much. This is the uh, employee detention area, eh? This is why we couldn't find Tyson after lunch. We won't say what he does down there. All right, guys, so this is going to be our last tech support piece uh, while we're here at CMMG. I know that we've covered a few that are absolutely ridiculous, but this one actually makes sense. This one might be like more common sense, although I could totally see myself doing this, especially if I... And this would be more of a frequently asked question because we get this asked quite frequently. So one of the best 22 kits on the market, like I have three of these actually. Um, this is the CMMG 22 conversion kit and they are awesome. The way this thing works is it goes up inside the chamber and it replaces all the guts of the gun, or excuse me, it replaces the, the bolt carrier 
the bolt carrier group and magazine, and you have a 22. Yes, if you're and you can see how this works, basically. It just replaces the guts. However, there is a frequently reported problem of people trying to put this thing in like this. You'll notice that there is a cap on the end of this thing. A lot of people don't see this as a cap. This is a shipping cap. And you can see that this is somewhat like this. And that is because that is exactly what you think that is. <laughs> that is a barrel extension in the shape of the chamber of your 5.56 gun. So it literally goes in like that. Do not hammer this rubber piece into the chamber. It will not work. I mean, excuse me, it may work. It just probably won't be as effective. Right. And it will be a lot of gnashing of teeth. You may even break the bolt as well. So guys, please take that off, throw it over your shoulder. It puts the lotion on its skin. So it's been a pretty cool day here at uh, CMMG. We've done a lot of cool things, seen some new stuff that's coming. And uh, hang on a second. We're just gonna take this whole pallet home with me. Whole pallet. Gonna do it. <laughs> I suspect something. <laughs> like it's now pointing at me. <laughs> if you see somewhere out on the YouTubes, Bazooka Green Resolute in 6mm arc, guess who got to shoot first? 